have. Cool. All right, so the recording is starting. If you need captioning, uh, you click the three buttons that says more, and those caption uh, options should pop up for you. Um, so my name is Dr. Daquan Bashir. I am a professional learning manager here with CSTA. I also work with the Microsoft Philanthropy Teals program uh, to uh, uh, increase computer science um, throughout the country. Uh, primarily, my regions are New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. In a uh, past life, I was a computer science educator and mathematics uh, for about 11 years. That's a bit about me. Um, and without further ado, let's get into why we are here today. Uh, today's topic is uh, centered around professional growth and identity, but also can have some elements of uh, 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 equity and inclusion uh, as we're thinking about how do we integrate computer science into varian, uh, various topics. And our speaker for today is Dr. Joseph, and I will allow her to present herself to you all. Thank you, Dr. Bashir. And there's some animation I didn't even know. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm so happy to have you join um, us today to talk about integrating CS into different disciplines. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Abigail Joseph. I've been a computer, I've been an educator for 20 plus years now. I primarily worked um, in middle schools in a variety of positions as technology teacher, technology coordinator, computer science teacher, um, a instructional coach type of person working with teachers. So I've worked with uh, K through adults. And currently I work as an instructor for the Oracle Education Foundation where we develop project-based computer science experiences for high school steeped in design thinking and features thinking. I currently sit on the CSTA board and am a CSTA equity alum. And um, I have many outside passions um, like art and photography and dance. And you'll understand why I asked you all to drop your passions in the chat, um, because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about integration today and how um, possible ways that you can integrate CS into other subject areas. So I like to um, I like to look at my topics through the lens of innovation. Um, and I always like to start with a good design challenge question. And so today we as a group, this is gonna be a very interactive workshop. I'm not gonna just talk to you for uh, 45 minutes, but hope, we'll, hopefully you will participate along the way. And so our design challenge for today is how might we integrate computer science into other um, disciplines, should have been a S, uh, but that's the frame from which we are going to look at um, this subject matter today. Uh, I, you can't be an expert in everything computer science, nor everything in every other discipline that is out there. Um, nor can I. So I can't say that I can tell you how to integrate CS into history, science, language arts, um, languages. I can't specifically tell you how to do that, but I can give you a framework, which I'm doing going to do today um, through design that will hopefully get you going and thinking about how you might do this for yourself in your classrooms. All right, so 
our process for our next 40 minutes or so is going to be to go through a design thinking process. Uh, our first step is going to be to empathize with our user and gather inspiration. Then we're going to define our problem. Then we're going to generate some ideas. Um, we're going to think about what prototypes we could come up with. Um, think about the ways that we can test uh, the prototypes that we come up with. And then talk about sharing um, what you did. All right, so step one is to empathize. Um, in this picture, you see two kids um, talking, they're two children talking to each other. Um, one uh, um, black girl with braids and another uh, whispering in her ear. And um, when we're thinking about integrating different dis disciplines into computer science, we want to think about, well, why are we doing this? Who is our user? Who are we designing for when we're thinking about how can we integrate computer science into another discipline? So we're going to start with why. Um, so for me, I'll tell you a story. Most of, um, most of my life, I have felt polarized in terms of which path I should be going down in terms of a career. So in high school, I discovered computer science through a summer science program um, at Bell Labs in New Jersey, if there's anyone out there from Jersey. And um, that's where I fostered a love for computer science. I also, all through my childhood, had a wonderful um, relationship with art. I like to do crafts. I like to build things. I like to draw. Um, and when it came time to go to college, I had to choose art or computer science. The practical ran out, went out, and I pursued computer science all throughout college and graduate school. And, um, but when I was in college, I knew that I could not give up that art side of my brain. So I did, I took a lot of um, studio art classes, which is the picture that you see on the right, and um, or art history. At least once a semester, I had something related to art. Um, and at the time I was going through school, um, computer science was really at its budding stages. It was the dawn of the internet. The internet wasn't even a thing quite yet then. Email wasn't even a thing quite yet then. Uh, so this idea of me integrating two things together um, was not on anyone's mind, which is a whole different story when we come to fast forward to 2023, um, where there are lots of opportunities to uh, integrate computer science into a variety of disciplines. Um, so our first step stage is to think about who is your audience? Who are you designing for? Are you designing for yourself from the perspective of, ah, I want to, these are the standards that I'm trying to um, convey to my students to put into my curriculum. Um, or is it from the perspective of, I really want to provide my students a more enriching experience when they're taking computer science? Um, or maybe you are a subject teacher and you're just thinking about how you might integrate, sprinkle a little computer science into what you do. So when we're thinking about our audience, we're thinking about our teacher on the left and our student on the right on the right. Um, so as a teacher, you're thinking about, well, what is my classroom like? What, do, what is my objective in my classroom? Um, who might be people that I can work with? Who's the team that I'm gonna have to work with to go forward in this endeavor of integration? Um, you might even be thinking about what your passions, hobbies, and interests are. Um, maybe for you, it's about like thinking about, oh, well, this is something I'm intrigued by. Um, maybe I can pass it on to my students. Um, from the student 
perspective, if you're designing with your students in mind, you're thinking about their identity, their culture, what are their hobbies, what are their passions, what are their school interests, how are you going to bring them in to computer science, your computer science world, um, and integrate those two things together. And as you're in integrating those things, we're thinking about, if we're thinking about empathizing, we're thinking about embracing a new perspective. So maybe we want to look at what we're teaching through the eyes of our students. Um, and we want to get curious. This whole idea of integrating is about being curious about how we can integrate CS with another discipline. Um, and some ways that we can engage in this process of just discovery of who our audience is, right, is we can think about how do we collect, use our data, um, use the data that our schools provide us about our students, who they are, where they're from. Um, maybe we um, get that uh, ethnic race and ethnic data. Um, but we can also engage them. We could provide surveys. You could interview them. What do you like to do? What would you like to um, learn about in terms of compute, you know, computer programming and technology? Um, you can ob just observe them for a few days and you probably will get some clues as to what their interests are and how you might be able to pull them into this computer science world. So that's your first step. First step is who's your audience? Are you, is your audience standards? Is your audience an objective getting to know your students better. Um, why do you want to integrate CS into another discipline? So go ahead and answer that question in the chat if you have an answer. Why do you want to integrate CS into another discipline? So providing students with choice, fantastic way to get them participating in the classroom, for sure. to give students more meaningful experiences in school. A great way to enrich other content areas. Love these. To get students thinking, um, to introduce possible pathways, uh, to have them think about life as a full context. This is wonderful. And sometimes the why and is because it's a mandated process, but um, and because there's a lack of CS classes, so how are we going to get and infuse that CS into other parts of what we're doing? These are fantastic. So we're going to move on to the next stage, which is to define our problem. I think that when you're approaching, when we're approaching integration, it's such a, it can be an overwhelming, where do I begin? How do I start? What do I do? Um, but if we have a focus problem from which we're trying to solve um, this, this issue, then it may become a little bit easier to brainstorm ideas of how you can actually bring in computer science into various disciplines. So we're going to take a little bit of that overwhelm of Integrating seems like a really big thing because I'm already trying to figure out what the CS skills are. Now I'm talking about integrating it into another subject. Or if you are another subject um, expert and then you're trying to think of ways that you can bring CS into your subject area, that can be overwhelming as well if you don't know where to begin. All right. So I really should have tested this beforehand. I didn't know this uh, slide template I used had all these animations in them, but it's all right. All right, so in this defined stage, we're gonna scope out the challenge, we're gonna frame the problem, and we're gonna focus on a specific point of view. Um, yes, Jeff, I love it. A lot of teachers, 
are afraid of the computer and the word science <laughs> can be overwhelming to a lot of folks. So you know what, Jeff, we're gonna use what you just said as the context for this next stage, right? Figuring out, framing our problem. So in framing our problem in the design thinking process, there are many ways to um, create a problem statement. One is using a point of view and there's three parts to the point of view. One is who is your user? Um, when you're defining a user, you wanna be very descriptive. So I wouldn't just say my user is a student. I would get really specific. My user is a middle school student in my science classroom, or my student is a sixth grade girl in my computer science classroom that doesn't talk a lot. So as specific as you, the more specific you can be about who you're trying to design for, um, it'll give you a better frame for coming up with your ideas and solutions. The next part will be the need. What does your user need to do or feel, or how do you want them to feel? Um, and then the third piece is an insight. Why is the problem important or significant? Um, and if you've done some work in the empathy stage of maybe interviewing or observing students in action um, or observing your colleagues, there might be some things that surprise you around the conversations people are having around computer science, et cetera, that might help you frame your problem better. So as I said, I'm gonna look at what Jeff wrote down here. A lot of teachers I work with are afraid of the computer and the word science to that and can be over and it can be overwhelming for folks. So let's say we're designing for uh, specifically for uh, teachers that are afraid of technology um, and things that um, this discipline that seems very complicated. And the need um, is to make them feel more comfortable with or demystify what computer science is. Um, and why is this problem good, significant? Well, because as someone said before, um, many states are now mandating computer science, um, but teachers, we don't have enough teachers to teach it. We don't have the class offerings to offer or the programs. So this is important. Um, so that we can have, so that there are more teachers that are able to comfortably teach computer science or introduce computer science to their students. So if we put that all together, our point of view would be um, a teachers who are, um, a, who think computer science is a very complicated subject matter that they can never teach needs a way to um, not feel overwhelmed um, and feel more comfortable or have computer science demystified for them so that um, we have more teachers that feel comfortable with and have the ability to integrate and teach computer science in their classes. Um, especially those that aren't official computer science teachers. So that's our point of view statement. We could have another point of st view statement if you're trying to focus in on your classroom teach on uh, your students and getting to know them better, um, then another possible statement might be um, a, a girl who sits in the corner of my classroom and doesn't seem engaged, um, needs a way to um, be pulled in to the computer science curriculum and feel comfortable with it um, in order to make her feel like computer science is a discipline 
that she can excel at. So that could be another possible statement, a direction that you could go in in terms of thinking about who we're focusing on. All right. So this is the fun step. This is the crux of my presentation. This is probably where you, why you all are here for some resources and some insights. Um, so now that we have our problem statement about our very anxious teacher, um, how are we gonna get them, um, how are we gonna demystify what computer science is to them? How are we gonna rope them in so that they feel comfortable teaching in this realm, in this field um, of computer science. So we are going to start our next step is to brainstorm some solutions to that problem. All right, so when we're brainstorming, this is important and I think really important for integration because I'm gonna drop a bucket full of resources to you in a moment. Um, of which do not be concerned at the end, I'm going to give you the bit.ly for the slide deck so you will have all the links to all the resources. Um, but I want you to think about what you're trying to do so then you can think about where you're going to go for resources and ideas um, to develop a solution for your problem. So when we're brainstorming, we're going for volume. We're trying to come up with all the different ways that we can answer this question about like making this very anxious teacher more comfortable with what computer science is. Um, and usually um, being visual is a big part of the brainstorming process because when you draw things in pictures, it kind of solidifies those ideas. Um, in a more concrete way than usually if you're um, just write down words. And then you're gonna also go for wild ideas. Um, so, and I know that at each grade level, there's a different working atmosphere for how teachers work and collaborate together. Um, and I think that's why I always kind of like enjoyed middle school because also teachers kind of take on the personality of the age group they teach. So middle school teachers tend to be as awkward um, and funny um, as the middle schoolers that we teach. And so, um, oh, so it's like talking about going for wild ideas. So I was talking about the dynamics really between different teachers. And I know as we go up, in grade levels, teachers tend to get more and more siloed from each other, and they really streamline and focus on their discipline. Um, and so a wild idea for your discipline might just be collaborating with a teacher in another subject area. Um, and I think for high school, that's especially a very wild idea, unless you work at a, a school that um, has some underlying cultural foundation of collaboration between um, disciplines and colleagues. Mm. So reframing what computer science is. I like that comment in the chat, um, Scott. And then when you're thinking about your ideas, keep everything. Um, there's no bad idea. Um, you might try one path and then be like, that didn't quite land the way I wanted to. So you might go back to some other ideas that you jotted down um, and revisit them. So those are the steps. So we are going to, as part of our brainstorming, seek inspiration. Um, and the three areas that I thought um, that would be very helpful for seeking inspiration in the context of integration and integrating into other content is thinking about identity inclusive content. So this is these are things that are focused on ethics, impacts of computing, um, data, uh, cultural relevancy. So these are things that would be identity affirming for your students, thinking about the culture of their family, 
um, and what they, how their ex outside experiences that they're bringing into the school, and then thinking about what curriculum resources you have out there that you can tap into. There's no need to reinvent the wheel if the wheel already exists. Um, yes, biology, science is like the, probably the biggest discipline that, and math, um, that really integrates nicely with computer science because there's so much that one can do with data. So I like that addition. So let's look at some of these a little bit in more detail. All right, so first we have identity inclusive content. So this is stuff, this is the easy lift. So when we're talking about integration, computer science is not just coding. I think that's the other myth, mythical thing that our computer science teacher that's afraid of computer science um, probably thinks that um, in order to teach computer science, she has to be a coder. Not necessary. Computer science, as Scott pointed, someone pointed out earlier, is problem solving, right? Um, so when we think about things that are identity inclusive, we can think about videos. Um, we can think about various experiences that can be brought in. Um, you can add in your own points, which I forgot to delete out because I couldn't think of any more points to add. But uh, videos are a fantastic way to introduce and talk about compu computers and the impacts of computing. Um, and I've included a few um, links to a couple of videos that um, talk about computing um, in interesting ways that you can do discussions with um, your students around um, computer science. Um, this Google Translate one is old, but it's a goodie because it talks about the algorithm that Google Trans Translate uses, um, which is a great way to weave in a top topic of algorithms um, and how they work. Um, this one is about an application using AI to predict air pollution in India. And um, this one talks about how um, the use of computers in industrial automation. I'm just catching up in the chat here. I'm liking everything that's being laid out there. Awesome. Uh, if you are teaching an older audience like high school um, and maybe eighth, seven, eighth grade, MIT Moral Machine is a great resource. Um, it's about um, gathering the human perspective on machine learning moral dilemmas, um, primarily self-driving cars. So it provides like two different um, viewpoints and it asks you which should the car go straight or should the car swerve? And in those different scenarios, there are different um, objects that the car might hit. So you might have in one direction, you might have two pregnant ladies crossing the street. In another direction, you might have a um, uh, two women walking their dogs. Um, and what, which way, would you choose for the car to go? Um, it's interesting because it makes people very uncomfortable. Um, it's also something you can do with um, uh, adults as well um, because no one wants them to have to make the decision, yet we are programming our cars to make those decisions. Um, these are a few, a uh, couple videos and links to talking about generative art and AI. Um, and of course, artificial intelligence is a big topic um, and there are many resources that you can Google around that. Um, and so these are just ways that you can bring in the impacts of computing um, as and relate it to your students. And that's one way to integrate conversation, discussions, who made this thing? Why did they make it? 
Um, what are the problems with it? Um, what are the things, the angles, the perspectives that they didn't look at when they were designing these things? All these things are great ways to integrate and you can do that in any subject area. Then we can talk about making things culturally relevant. Um, so this site is a fantastic site. So I'm gonna escape out of here and just show you guys, you all some of these links. Um, so this culturally situated design tools provides various applications to look into um, cultural patterns um, from different cultures. And it provides, um, so if we look at the nature of cornrows, um, and this actually library get, keeps evolving um, and getting bigger and better um, under this NSF grant. But um, in this particular, there's um, for this age group, and it gives you a lot of background information that you can introduce and talk and discuss with your students about. Um, and then it also provides tutorials and um, example programs to get started with and how you can utilize um, the different computer science tools to develop patterns to these different cultures. Yes, this is a fantastic um, resource, Crystal. Um, but then when we're talking about cultural relevance, we can also look at CSTA, the CS Ed Week resources. Um, the CS Heroes is a great place to talk about cultural relevance because the heroes are all a diverse group of people. And uh, do I click on here? Let's see. No. Well, that's fine. Um, and so you talk about um, cultural relevance. Here are a group of people you can curate based on who is in your classroom. Um, and introduce what they love to do and why they love to do it. Um, and these are from uh, CS Ed Week 2022. So all of these are young people, um, which is even more relevant to your age group because they are closer to them, um, which is a great way to talk about and introduce CS to your students and give them some mirrors and possibly some windows um, around these CS heroes. And, oh, here we go. So when you scroll down, you can also get to each of the different heroes, but um, you can go back in time to the different years um, and topics for the CS heroes. Uh, and when you click, on a hero, you will not only get um, the posters, but you get other resources. So this is another way to cultivate some more information um, about a specific uh, cultural background and how you might introduce this to your students and integrate it with um, what you are talking and making it relevant to them. Um, so this is a great resource and most of the heroes, there's a, also a video um, that features them. So that is a fantastic resource. Um, and then uh, Equity Fellow Sheila Lee did a fantastic, if you want to do anything with paper circuits and circuitry, um, and maybe you can possibly figure out how to lift this to micro bits. Uh, this link will take you to the Chibi Chattox article um, that features this wonderful lesson around identity um, and computer science that Sheila did with Chibi Chattox and how she introduced this idea of identity maps 
and lighting them up to her students. Um, fantastic way to integrate this idea of making something culturally relevant to your students. Um, and then you can think about like community solutions. What are the things that they're worried about? What are the things, the problems that are in their lives and um, that they want, the problems they wanna solve in their communities, at, in your school communities, right? Um, and there, these, are, these links, when you get to them, are links to um, some videos um, of possible thinking about how communities are solving problems with technology. This is often an angle that really interests and brings girls into the conversation because they tend to be uh, very community oriented in terms of, there you are, um, how they like to look at the world. Uh, and then you can think about their hobbies. Um, these are some videos that focus on dance and fashion and how these people are integrating computer science into their loves and their hobbies. Um, and then you can think about just like everyday innovation of things. Uh, this video is very cool. It talks about the AI and science behind some people who are trying to move, make moving sidewalk shoes. So shoes that you can wear that feel like those moving sidewalks at the airport. Um, very, very, very cool. So it's really great to think about like the variety of ways that you can be culturally relevant to your students um, when you're thinking about solutions and who you're designing for. And lastly, um, curriculum resources. So here I've got a bunch of resources that you might think about. Um, Microbit has the Do Your Bit site, which is integrated with the Global Sustainability Goals, which is a minefield of ways that one can integrate computer science because the Global Sustainability Goals cover everything from the human perspective to science, to medical, to education. Um, so that is a great place to collect uh, information on integration. Uh, I would also suggest um, if you are on social media to go on Twitter and do some searches on the previous CS Ed Week hashtags. Um, guaranteed to bring up some ideas for how to integrate CS into various disciplines, especially the one CS everywhere, because um, that was the year we talked about how CS is integrated into various areas. Um, showed you the CS heroes. Uh, CS First is a Google site, which was designed um, in tandem with collaboration with other educators. Um, and it's designed to be hands-on experiences where the teacher needs no CS experience whatsoever. Um, it gives you step-by-step -step how to work through these different areas with your students. And there are lots about storytelling um, and various ways to integrate um, CS into other kind of language arts -y types of things. And then we can think about CS plus the arts, which is near and dear to my heart because um, that is a thing I love to do. So I kind of um, lean in that direction a lot in terms of creative coding um, and creative computing. Uh, but the, these are some links that you can go to if you're thinking about how might I integrate music or art into um, what I'm doing and teaching. Um, and then Girls Who Code has a great website with a bunch of activities that are designed for home, which means if they're designed for home, they're probably designed for our very renaissance teacher who's a little overwhelmed and afraid of how they might integrate CS into their classes. Um, and then PBL Works is a project of project-based um, ideas and projects um, that are aligned to standards, um, mainly focused on, I think, science standards, but uh, it's a great place for inspiration um, when you're thinking about what or how you want to approach uh, integrating computer science into what you do.
All right, and so I am all about the chat GPT. Now, I have been exploring it the past two weeks. And when I was putting together this presentation, I was all, what would chat GPT tell me to do if I asked it how to help me with ideas on how to integrate computer science with another subject area? So if you haven't gone there, um, totally worth the exploration. And I'm going to show you what I did. So we're going to try chat GTP. And so what I did was I was thinking about science as a discipline. And I asked um, chat GPT to tell me ways to integrate science with computer science to create lessons for my middle school students. And as you can see, Chat GT, GPT came up with a lot of ideas. So um, from data visualization to robotics, to simulations, um, coding challenges. So we're talking about just introducing it as a tool, as a short like unit. You can do a coding challenge with your students. Um, you can have them design games around science concepts. Um, you can integrate 3D printing ideas. Uh, so chat, G Why can I do chat um, GPT is a great use source for inspiration around integration. And then you can take it a little further. Like, so if you're like, all right, I'm gonna think about my school happens to have some virtual reality equipment. So then I might ask it, all right, can you tell me um, what are, Give me examples of lessons I can do with virtual reality and computer science and science in my classroom. And it'll probably spit out some really specific uh, examples. So I wanted to throw that out there as a place for inspiration as well. So we are winding down and we are at our last stages here. So we're gonna talk about now that you have, you might have your idea, how do you go about prototyping that idea? So one way is to build it. And I'm going to really emphasize this prototyping method because that was something I did not do a lot of when I was in the classroom. Um, I would come up with these great ideas and then I would throw it out there and have the students do it and then be surprised by the myriad of ways that they took it and um, the things that they built. But I think as practitioners, uh, we should provide ourselves the space to practice ourselves. So um, if you found something that you're like, I think this is a good idea, try it out, build it yourself, go through the instructions, see how they feel, um, and know that um, if you're a person who's not very comfortable with computer science, see what happens. Um, I think the beauty of computer science is that there's no right answer. And so going on a walking journey with your students is okay. I often design things and I'm all like, I'm mostly familiar, but not completely. Um, so let's see what happens. Um, and I think students really enjoy it when their teachers are learning with them because it kind of humanizes you as a teacher. Um, and that's another way you can make better connections with your students in the classroom. So one way to prototype is to build it. Um, the other, of course, is to think about your lesson plan. How would you design this experience? How is How are you gonna touch um, CS computer science standards and how are you gonna touch standards from another discipline? How are you gonna collaborate with another teacher if that is a possibility? If you have a bunch of co-conspirators at your school that are excited about trying to figure out how to get more computer science to our, in the hands of your students, maybe there are some people on your team in another discipline that you can connect with and figure out, well, this is what they're doing right now. Right now they're learning about water cycles and science. So maybe they can create a simulation in Scratch around water cycles. And part of the uh, skills that I want them to learn in CS is how to create a loop so that they can continually show uh, the cycle of water. 
So lesson planning is a way to prototype. That can be your prototype. Um, the other thing I like about design thinking is this notion of user journey maps. So thinking about who your user is and what their experience is along the life of how they're going to interact with what you're doing. So thinking about that teacher who is um, anxious around computer science. So maybe they're at the first stage, I say, all right, we're going to try to integrate computer science into your language arts class. Oh my gosh, they're terrified, right? The next step is we'll use Scott's um, example. All right, I'm just going to tell you that computers define computer science for you so you're not scared. So computer science is about computational thinking, problem solving, and coding. Guess what? We don't have to do coding. We can focus on the problem solving side or the critical thinking side. Oh, their ears start to perk up. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, let's start with impact videos. Let's find a video that talks about how computer science is integrated into language or just in the world. And maybe your kids can write a reflection about what they think about how computer science is in that world, right? So that's the idea of the journey map, stepping through what the experience will look like and how your user will react to it along the way. So that's a possible way um, to prototype your idea and put it into, um, make it more concrete. And the last step is to test, right? So you have this grand idea, you have planned it out, you have the lesson plan. Well, it's time to put it to the test. So you're going to bring it to your students, you're going to deliver it. But what you're going to do also is capture feedback from that test. Um, and the two ways that you can capture that feedback is one is a feedback matrix, which I put right here. So you can catch the things that the students liked, um, things that they would like to have changed, questions they've had along the way, or other ideas that they brought to you. Like often when you're doing something, kids will be like, oh man, I wish I could have learned how to do this, or I really want to learn how to do this next. Those are all ideas that you can capture um, as they are doing the experience that you created for them. My favorite cap way to capture feedback is using I like, I like, I wish, what if, or sometimes people like use, I like, I wish, I wonder. And that is a great way for students to frame feedback in any scenario, because um, it kind of keeps them, it gives them a structure for feedback so that they're not just saying, uh, I liked it or uh, it was okay. Um, but more, they have to be more specific about, well, I like the fact that you made your racing car um, do loop-de-loops. I wish that you possibly um, gave the user more choice about the speeds at which the car was going. Um, and what if you introduce a spaceship into your game because spaceships are cool? Um, so that's a way to capture feedback, but you can also use it for your, um, them to give you feedback on the lesson. Like, what did you like about this lesson? And what do you wish um, could happen differently? Or what do you wonder about um, as a way so that you, the next time you go to do this lesson, you can kind of take that feedback and tweak it and make it a little better. So that takes us to the end of our design journey here. Um, and the last step of the design thinking process is to share the story. So I would love if you came up with a good design problem and tried it out that you share it, share it on social media, share it with me. I would love to, I love seeing the things that people do in their classroom, um, especially when it comes to CS plus X and integration. That's kind of the way I see CS, we get, see us as a community getting computer science more in the hands of more students. Um, so please do share your story and keep in touch. 
the bit.ly in the yellow orange box here is how you can get the slides um, right now, uh, but they will also be sent out after the presentation at the end. So thank you for your ears. Um, at this time, we will go to uh, Q&A. So I will stop sharing my screen for now and bring you all back so I can see you. Um, and please, any questions, comments in the chat, you can come on video off mic. Um, love to hear. You are very welcome, Kimberly. Well, let me ask you all a question that are still hanging out. Um, what are you thinking about in terms of integrating computer science now that you have um, experienced this workshop? It doesn't have to be a fleshed out idea. I'll share a little bit if you guys don't mind my kids listening to Michael Jackson in the background. No worries, Crystal. <laughs> um, so I've been trying to figure out how to solve the issue. My state has mandated uh, CS all the way down to the babies, but there is no accountability. Um, there is no plan. There is no true model. So I've been just scraping my brain trying to figure out how can I get this done? Because just like was mentioned before, they're afraid of computers. They're afraid of science. You put it together. Everybody's passing out, you know, in the classrooms. What am I going to do? Um, but I think you have made it clear with me for a plan. I recently was talking to Vicki Sed Sedwick um, and she was mm -hmm. help as well. And so I think with the resources you provided, my plan moving forward will be the first term we're getting them comfortable with specific um, platforms and learning how to utilize them. And then the next three terms will be cross curricular projects. So each grade level, we're going to work together. We're going to have um, whatever goal they decide. I don't know what it's going to be, <laughs> you know, and the kids can work in each classroom a little bit, you know, every day or however they schedule it to one awesome project at the end of the year. I love that. Um, and what I love about it also is that if you add in a little um, design um, thinking and tracking what you're doing, you could build like a mini framework that you could pass on to other teachers, right? So take what you're doing and testing it out and then kind of come up with a blueprint or some plans that other teachers could in your community, school community could utilize to um, do this process. I love that, Crystal. Thanks for sharing. Mm, I like that, Erica. That's a great design question. And I think that idea of introducing coding to different um, teachers and figuring out how to make it not a one size fits all. And I think that's an approach that we often take is one size fits all, which is why I did this in the sense of a design framework because one size does not fit all. And that's kind of been our problem. Um, and so if we're going to expand, we have to think about how we can approach it for different viewers. So thank you all very much. I'm going to put up the last slide there, Dr. Bashir. Um, share screen. Mark, share. Oh, it popped over. It's so weird.
Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph. Really appreciate this session. Um, all great information. Um, this will be shared with you all. Um, the slides included. Uh, Dr. Joseph dropped the link in the chat, um, but it will also come to your emails as a follow up. Um, if you have a moment, if you have a chance, please feel free to fill out a feedback form. I just dropped the link here in the chat. Uh, so that uh, uh, we can continue to make um, uh, professional learning series events that uh, you all deem worthwhile and are learning from. Um, again, thank you all so much for being here. Um, really appreciate